Good morning, everybody. Uh, I will try to speak a little bit about uh, explainability uh, first, and uh, after my introduction, the two uh, women here will give uh, more deep analysis uh, based on their uh, PhD uh, on uh, two work done, one on speaker identification and one on <laughs> pathological voice assessment. You could hear me because my it seems that the, my voice is uh, really low <laughs> when I'm hearing it now. So, uh, just in introduction, it's in fact very difficult, quite impossible, uh, to give a lecture on uh, interpretability and um, explainability in speech processing. Because if you go really a little bit uh, deep in the papers, uh, there is nothing working <laughs> now in speech. So more than a lecture, what I want to do is an introduction and have a discussion and debate uh, with you. So you could interrupt me when you want, ask question, wait the end, or uh, say something before, like you, like you want. Please feel free to do that. Uh, I will give some introduction, some word on why we need uh, uh, explainability and interpretability. Try to define these two notions and. Uh, agree with you on the difference between explainability and interpretability, come on some very classical uh, lecture, uh, very classical notion on uh, how and the free level of uh, interpretability, and move to the interesting part uh, for me, which is uh, when we are working on speech, what could we do uh, in terms of explainability, where are the problems, and which uh, which are uh, the small steps uh, we already done, uh, me and maybe you, I hope. So, why do we need explainability and interpretability? Uh, first, if you come from companies, you need uh, customers. If you want to have customers, you need trust. They need to uh, believe that your application, your speech-based application, your language-based application are uh, fair, are working correctly, and uh, this, this trust is very important, and without explainability, I hope I will uh, convince you there is no tr trust possible. Uh, second is more uh, mandatory, there is some regulation, mainly coming from the uh, European Union, but also uh, accepted by all the other uh, countries now. For example, uh, example, the Californian law is maybe stronger than the first uh, uh, European regulation. And I don't know if you follow the, the new AI Act just adopted uh, in Europe, and uh, this AI Act changed completely the uh, view on the problem. Uh, the first uh, RGPD, the first part in the regulation was on protecting the data. The second part on uh, AI Act is on regulating the application. And in this uh, law regulation, uh, there is something saying that if you, if you are close to human person, you are uh, classified as a high risk application. If you want to sell uh, a high risk application, <coughs> Explainability is mandatory. You have, it's mandatory, you have to explain to someone else why your system took a decision at one time. Uh, of course, it's a very recent uh, law. We will need maybe three, four, five years to see how it will be applied in practice. But now it's written in black and white paper that. Uh, uh, explainability is mandatory for uh, this kind of application. Everything around speech processing will fall in high-risk application uh, in this law because it's always linked to uh, human life. So uh, the, the next uh, reason is uh, detecting the uh, <laughs> bias, bias, bias. It's always difficult for me in French, I'm sorry, uh, between bias and bias. So, Detecting a bias uh, and be sure that your system is fair for everybody. Uh, it's also included in the regulation, but it's also important for customers now who want to, to
to be sure on uh, what the company is doing or uh, for us what we are doing in research. And uh, then it, it's also important for us to help us to develop a system and be sure that our system, when, when we fine-tune a system and improve, um, see an improvement in accuracy without exp explanation uh, with XAI, it's very difficult to know if we just do a, a random optimization based on a bias, for, for example, in speech on a noise uh, uh, in, in the back of, of a room, or if we really improve uh, the system. So even for us, to be sure to uh, uh, gain new knowledge and improve the system, we will need this, uh, this level of uh, uh, deeper view in the system thanks to explanation. So there is a lot of ethical consideration. Uh, I will just come back here to the, to the uh, bias uh, problem and be sure to be fair to uh, everybody. Economical consideration uh, linked to trust and uh, to uh, be sure that we will not have the customers uh, trying to say that we, we, we should not use technology uh, in the future like we are we could now see some uh, big movement in the world against the technology, against ChatGPT, but against the technology. And uh, it could come very rapidly if we are not taking care about that. And uh, I already talked about scientific consideration. So just two few very, very small examples uh, of uh, this uh, problem. First one was the, uh, the possibility to corrupt the system, to, to, to uh, send some uh, uh, shadowed uh, commands uh, in, s in Alexa or Siri uh, and uh, it, it just shows that if your system is able to do that, it means that your system is not working really on speech recognition. It's recognizing human commands, but maybe it's not speech. Something else is recognized uh, because in this case, at the audio level, you can't hear the, the, the shadowed command, but the system understood the command. If a human perception is not able to understand it, it's not speech. So your, the, the, the original system was not working really on what uh, the developers expected uh, to see it uh, doing. Uh, it was taking some over information and uh, this kind of um, uh, stuff is very dangerous in the future. You, you, you need to be sure that the system is answering exactly to what you want uh, it to answer. The second example is very well uh, known, uh, Compass with only one S, sorry. It was, it's an application, it was an application used in the US to predict uh, uh, the, the risk uh, that uh, someone commit a, a future cr crime, a criminal already in, in, in the in the law court uh, and uh, the, the judge are using this system to uh, predict uh, the, the possibility to, uh, to see them commi committing a, a future crime. And after uh, some uh, study, uh, two years after, they observed that uh, the system uh, made uh, two times uh, more uh, errors with black people compared to white people. So the, the, this, this system with a, a huge impact on the human life was completely biased, uh, bia biased by uh, the, the, the training data, of course. There is no, uh, it was not uh, dedicated to that, but in practice, uh, the system had a big problem. Oh yeah. Well, this one is just funny. I, I, I think you, you, you know all this example. It was the bank HSBC who uh, start a new system in UK saying, okay, you don't need to access to your bank uh, account, you don't need password, you need uh, only your voice. You have just to say uh, to the microphone, my voice is my password, and the system should work. And they said in big, uh, I, I lost the, the image, but they, they, be, uh, they uh, made big advertisement everywhere saying, okay, with our system, there is 100 unique characteristic per pe people in their voice used to identify someone without uh, mistakes, zero errors in all the situations. And uh, uh, a journalist, uh, Dan Simmons, tried online in the BBC to cheat the system using uh, his brother. 
at, at the five or six uh, attempt, after five or six attempt, they arrived to cheat the system online uh, in front of two or three thousand uh, people looking at the TV. So uh, it was just... If it's Ask working... Please repeat the just phrase, my voice is my password. My voice is my, my password. So he's not the owner of the account. He's not the owner of the account. Welcome to HSBC And just, he gained the access to the system. Of course, HSBC explained just after, before to stop the, the, the service, uh, that there is some mistake sometimes because uh, they are brothers, uh, they are twins uh, in practice. But you could see the effect of something like that. And uh, you could see that the problem when you, you promise that the system will make no mistake without explanation and you could see uh, sometimes a problem. So, uh, definition. For me, explainability is uh, the, the way to give technical elements which uh, drove the decision of a system. So, it's explainability for me is for experts, for us, uh, people who know the system, know the AI, and we could explain that these features uh, make, uh, made this effect in this part of the model or things uh, like that. So uh, we have to understand uh, how the training uh, works, uh, how the system is working uh, in this case. Interpretability is something a little bit different. Uh, interpretability is how to explain the system decision to uh, the, the uh, user. So to someone who is not an expert of AI. Of course, this person could be an expert of uh, her or his uh, area. We will have some example about uh, justice uh, just after. And the expert is in this case is a judge. For a judge, you will not say, okay, the third layer of the network uh, had a problem uh, even if it's true, it will not help uh, the judge to understand why the system took a decision in this case. So, explainability, find the technical elements inside the data or inside the training set, uh, the way you train it, uh, inside the training protocol, what you, what you want, which explain why in one specific situation or in general, a system is taking a decision. It's technical element. Explainability is how to translate this technical element in the uh, natural language for a uh, user, depending on the user and depending on the user area, which is really more, more challenging than uh, explainability uh, only. So, the, the, this definition between just a very short uh, word about that. The, uh, my, the definition I'm using for explainability and interpretability are sometimes in the, in, uh, the papers uh, you, you could read exactly the opposite. Uh, or in, uh, specifically, if you come from mathematics, the definitions are completely uh, at the opposite than uh, this definition, which are more linked to uh, philosophy uh, and what is interpretability in terms of philosophy. So, take care, sometimes you, you will read uh, uh, interpretability when uh, people want to, to speak about uh, explainability and exactly the opposite. Uh, in fact, both are always linked and two face of the same uh, coin. Okay, so the how. In explainability, you could have three... Usually, we are trying to identify three different levels. Uh, Pre-modeling uh, explainability, pre-hoc, uh, pre is uh, in fact uh, data science, what you know about your data uh, before to run your system, what you know about the area, uh, the uh, physical phenomena you are trying to modelize into your system. So you work at the dat data level, not at the uh, system uh, level, and not at the decision level, it's just what you could do on the data. I will not talk a, lo a lot about that today, but one, in advance, one sentence of my conclusion is without uh, this pre-hoc uh, explainability, you, you could never do uh, explainable system. 
If you don't understand your data, you have no chance to uh, understand the decision of your system. So this is absolutely it's straightforward, but it's absolutely uh, mandatory. Uh, explainable modeling is uh, the hopes, the wishes. What we want is a model which intrinsically is able to explain how it, ta it uh, takes the decision and which explain everything. There is some model like that, uh, uh, like the decision trees, which could seem to be uh, intrinsically uh, explainable, uh, but the main part of our neural network model are not following in this category, and not going in, in falling in this category. So the main uh, application of explica explicability are uh, a mix between the second level and the third level, which is uh, post hoc modeling. You have already your system, you train it, and now, now you want to add explainability to the system, so understand better what the system is doing and how it is taking the decision. The main advantage in this case is you are not losing performance because you train your system classically and you, you, you don't constrain the, the model structure due to uh, explainability. So some uh, example of post hoc uh, modeling, uh, I think you know that, uh, you know these techniques because it now it's very classical. The most known is LIME, uh, uh, L-E-M-E in French, uh, which is a, 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 a tool uh, quite interesting. What you are doing is just uh, you, you take your real example, make around the example uh, some um, fake uh, uh, inputs. So you just generate inputs around the point you want to uh, uh, interpret or to understand the decision of the system, and now retrain. No, so to each of the example, each of the point here, you ask to your system to take a decision. Is it, in this case, in the blue area uh, or not? And then you uh, train a very simple system, a linear discriminant system at this uh, point, to, in order to understand the local decision. So each time I want to understand what my system is doing here, I have my real example here, I'm generating other example around, around this one, ask to my, syst my system to classify these points, uh, yes or no, they are in or they are not, not in, and now try to train a very simple linear classifier which explain the local decision. So it's a very interesting technique, very easy, very informatic, nothing theoric, very uh, computer science, quite easy. Some very well-known example uh, with a uh, adding level which is uh, image segmentation which uh, show uh, le, le some, uh, uh, for example, if you, le, the, the Husky uh, classifier has a wolf, and the explanation said that this, no, it was not this one, no, it should be, no, well, that, that this, this part of the image, the snow, in fact, uh, draw, draw the decision. So uh, the, 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 the important part of the image is, was only here. Better than this uh, first, uh, according to me, uh, uh, a better technology and, and maybe the best approach is the Shapley value computation and the SHAP toolkit linked to that. This is very interesting because it's theoretically very strong based on game theory. In fact, you are trying to understand the individual role of each of your uh, features, each of your input in, in a case, each of your features, in the decision. And thanks to the uh, uh, theory, each part are independent, additive, so you split the final decision of a system into parts dedicated to each of the uh, inputs. I will just give an example and not uh, speak a lot about that because I'm quite sure uh, Imen will come back on that uh, later. So, for example, uh, here, in a cancer prediction system, uh, you could ha see the influence of each of the features, tabular feature in this case, and uh, on uh, the decision. So, compared to the average decision, the random decision of the system, you have, we have here a decision 
really higher of uh, 54 and this difference is explained by uh, the features show here and you just to obtain the, 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 the difference 54 you just have you just have to add to add, uh, the contribution of the individual features there is a lot of limitation in chap in Chaplet. the main limitation is in terms of computational uh, power it's very high and quite uh, quite intractable in speech because in speech for example i will come back on that later but uh, one features means one of the uh, in input coefficient of acoustic vectors multiplied by the number of vectors so the complete matrix if you if it's an image you have to give each pixel has a features to uh, Shapley and when they try when Shapley is trying to compute the influence of one point Shapley has to uh, take into account all the possible value for these features so in, in tabular solution where you have only 10 value it's quite easy in uh, dom continuous uh, domain, numerical domain, it's very complex. But Chaplet is very, very interesting. So you have the, the, the Chap toolkit, which is very interesting for, to compute that, and propose very interesting plot. It's the only system which, only approach, which propose in one plot to show uh, the explainability of uh, all uh, uh, data set. So here you have uh, the different features, most important one top in the top to the less important one in, in, the, um, in the down part. Left to right, you have the influence of each point. So, uh, for example, uh, at the extreme left uh, alcohol, uh, in you could see that the, the, the negative influence of uh, minus 1.5 of this uh, sample on uh, in the system and in uh, color you have a value of the features it's not easy to understand it immediately but in one pictures you could observe a training set for example a complete training set or a complete complete test set in terms of explainability and influence of each of the features in the system very nice so the second uh, of the three method method i want to to present here is the uh, influential instances. Uh, this one means uh, try to find which example of the training, for example, this one, drove the decision uh, of a system. So you see that this point in the training obtain this linear decision. If you withdraw only this point, the decision is moving to here and is really better, uh, in fact. And uh, the idea is quite simple in words, take all your training samples, retrain the model uh, by uh, taking one example uh, out and try to see the difference. You could understand that trying to do that on a large language model, for example, is not so uh, easy with some uh, billions of uh, input uh, examples. But in the idea, it's quite nice. If you go to the papers, it works perfectly in image and it's very clear in image. If you try to apply it, please send an email to me if it's working uh, well. Uh, I tried several times, but until now it's, it's not working very well. For example, here they show that the... Uh, sorry. Uh, you could see here the, this very classical example where the system predicts uh, in the image a guitar with a very high confidence for these three images. It seems very uh, strange. If you go to the explanation and uh, influential uh, instances, you could see that you have this four training example in the uh, classifier has guitar, has input, and you could understand if you put a, a guitar with a cat, maybe uh, you could understand why here uh, the system is deciding it's a guitar. So, influential instances is very nice, but I just, just want to uh, ask you for uh, attention here. You understood what I said because for you it's so easy to interpret this input in one second. Why? Because it, it is clear for your brain it's an image. In this image there is a cat. I don't have to explain it. If you want I could give to you some uh, audio samples. Just show the, the speech signal like that 
and ask to you if you understand the similarly the same uh, thing. Okay, okay, I could do more than that. I tried also. I could give to you the audio files. You will listen to the audio files. And at the end, you will know absolutely nothing more because you, you just uh, listen to the files, but you are not, uh, your brain is not able to understand that there is in the uh, uh, very high frequency a noise made by uh, this stuff. So uh, it drives a decision in, in the bad direction. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, so in this technique, you have to you remove one example and you retrain the whole model? No, not. Uh, this is the basic implementation. Now you have uh, some toolkits and some uh, strategy looking at the heat map uh, in the neural network to try to do it a little bit more uh, efficiently uh, than what I said. But mm -hmm. Okay, all right, <laughs> thanks. Uh, it, it was a little bit caricatural on when I, wh what I said, but, but uh, that's true. That it's, it is working. I, I saw recently uh, a work done by uh, someone from a, French co a big French company who tried to apply all the, to redo all the experiments published in these papers. And he showed that changing one element in the neural network uh, made uh, the result completely different and not working. So uh, his conclusion was bad, according to me. His conclusion was, uh, it's bullshit, we don't have to work on that. My conclusion is, uh, this is an example which opened a direction, but the work is not finished, and now if you want to apply it, uh, you have a lot to, to do. So when you go to uh, uh, heat map or looking really at what is happening inside the network, it's always very linked to the uh, network structure and it's difficult to generalize uh, the, the problem. Okay, maybe I will, I will speed this one, it's not the most interesting. Uh, the last, uh, really the last, I promise, uh, last me method I wanted to present to you is the counterfactual analysis. Uh, counterfactual analysis is try to find uh, the fact which uh, is necessary for the decision. If you withdraw only the, the, this fact, this word on the sentence, this, but it's more a fact, uh, the decision is not possible. So it's very well known in philosophy, in, in politics, a little bit less in uh, computer science. But uh, the idea is to see in your data uh, the causes, uh, to try to identify the causes and to see the, the smallest one uh, which uh, will change the decision if you withdraw it uh, in the system. It's very interesting, it could be in speech processing uh, or in image processing, uh, if you change the color of one part, just a small part like the, the, the snow in my previous example, uh, the system will uh, work correctly. If you put some white at this place, uh, the system will understand snow and will uh, say wolf in place of uh, a ski has an answer. So uh, the, this counterfactual is a nice idea. I, have, I tried to make a, one, a clear example here. What I want to see here is uh, in which feature I have to change here the, with the smallest direction in order to uh, inverse the decision of the system. So in this case, which is the bank application, uh, if you change the age of the client for a few years, uh, the system will accept uh, to give a loan to, uh, to the client. Uh, if you uh, withdraw or, or change a little bit uh, the, uh, the, the salary of the client, you could also change the decision. And the counterfactual analysis is try to find the smallest change uh, you have to do to inverse the, the, the decision. Okay. If you want to go, there is a nice toolkit uh, to, to go inside uh, this uh, counterfactual analysis. It's the, uh, the DICE toolkit is quite nice. Okay, explainable modeling. You will find here a lot of applications, a lot of systems like the uh, linear uh, classification system, the uh, regression tree, uh, the uh, GLM, uh, GLIM, uh, GAM uh, model. Uh, I don't want to, to explain that. The, the only things you have to get, keep in mind is 
you could do quite what you want with uh, decision trees. And decision trees, by nature, are explainable. The only problem is when you, you, you go to a random forest, for example, and you have one million of uh, decision trees, you explain something with one million of rules. So it, if you add complexity, you are losing uh, explainability. By, by nature, decision trees are explainable. If the decision tree is too complex, the explanation is more complex than uh, the initial problem. So you, you, you didn't win anything. Keep always that in mind. Adding complexity is always decreasing explainability. So uh, when we are talking about models, we should uh, absolutely find simple way to implement uh, explainability and not complex uh, ways. So say I will go out of my neural network with uh, 300 million parameters to go to random tree because with the random tree I will have explanation, explainability. In terms of accuracy, it will work. You will have a very big system, but it will work. In terms of explainability, it will be zero because the random tree, the resulting random tree, will be too complex uh, to, uh, in order too complex to use it as explanation. So it's the part where I'm, uh, I'm uh, the less confident on myself, which is the explanation in neural networks, but uh, Sundes will present some nice examples of that uh, after me, so I, I will sell you qu quite a few. Uh, of course, we have several ways uh, to, um, to do something uh, in hybrid, hybrid approaches and, and in a neural network to do some explanation uh, with the neural networks. Uh, we, we could mix a black box system with an explainable system, and uh, we will see two examples of that uh, after. Um, representation learning is a good example. You all, I think, know uh, about uh, representation learning. You listen to uh, Hervé speaking about embeddings for speaker diarization, the embedding is representation learning. You could have a very, very complex network to obtain the embedding, the net network itself is not explainable, but now if you exploit the embedding, the, the, the representation, with an explainable approach, uh, you could add explainability also to the uh, neural network because you will explain some of the mistakes or some of the good decisions of uh, the neural net thanks to the knowledge you are gathering from the embedding. Uh, the hybrid approaches are working quite well, and it's a, a good solution to, to do uh, that. Uh, you could also use uh, no one future way, very interesting, is to use knowledge distillation with the uh, teacher-student uh, approach. You train your billion parameter models, the accuracy is very good, and now you use this model to drive the training of a explainable uh, smaller model, uh, so you optimize it uh, as well as possible. But we will uh, come back on that with also with the Imen presentation, which is a sort of hybrid approach. Okay, uh, neural network interpretation, as I said, you could look at the uh, weight by uh, layer by layer, by area, the, uh, uh, attention parameters. Uh, the attention is very useful uh, now in order to understand what the system is doing. Uh, you have a lot of toolkits to do to, to do that. I think you are Sundays you are using la layer-wise uh, relevance propagation. Uh, no, you are not using it now. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, before to. To go to the conclusion, no, uh, I will start the conclusion of, the, of this first part by uh, uh, presenting a taxonomy, uh, very interesting according to me, which try to identify the main elements of uh, explainability. So what, what you want is uh, the explanation family. So explanation family is, is try to explain the decision, so how uh, here, the, the physical element, the input element, causes one fact, which is the target. The target is the decision, uh, the, the, the part of the decision you want to explain. So you, you have first to define the explanation family. You could 
understand the interpretation family also because uh, interpretability is exactly doing the same. So start by the user need. Define the user need. The user need uh, uh, obliges you to define the target, what you want to explain, how you want to explain it. This is the explanation family. And now you come to the drivers. What are the causes? What are the elements in your, in your data which cause the decision, uh, the target? And uh, in, for that, it's mandatory to come back to the uh, data analysis and knowledge on the uh, area. And then the easiest part is the how I just spent about uh, methodology, systems, it's uh, the engine, the estimator, how we could obtain the explanation. If you define correctly, uh, and it's very difficult to define correctly, uh, define correctly the target, the explanation family and the drivers, find a technical way to solve the system is not so difficult. The main difficulty really is to uh, understand the problem and to, s to, to know what you want to, to do. So know really uh, deeply uh, the, the, the drivers uh, mainly. For me, the main problem is the drivers. So I, I, I encourage you to give a look to the literature uh, about this taxonomy. Uh, there is several, not a lot of paper, but several papers. And it, it allow, uh, allow you to organize your, your think and your work after that. Each time I'm, I'm thinking about explainability, I'm coming back to that, okay, I want to speak about the drivers, but we are still uh, with the men working on the estimator uh, because I'm a computer science guy. Uh, I'm not a speech guy. The drivers are coming from speech. Uh, when I want to, 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 to speak about the target, I need, if we are working in, in, in a forensic voice comparison, I need a, a lawyer or a judge because the lawyer know, uh, knows what is the target, what he wants or she wants to be uh, to see explained by the system. So it's difficult because we are working only in the estimator part and we have to move to some other expert uh, in order to define the other part. Okay, some example of explanation family. It's completely open. I, do, I, I, I I'm not able to, to explain and to give it. It's uh, like that, like that, like that. But you could have some example. Uh, usually, it's uh, one feature or a set of features, set of input of a system. Uh, sometimes it's feature characteristics, uh, the color white for the snow, for example. Uh, sometimes it's local uh, decision function characteristic with a lime, for example. It just uh, I observe that my decision uh, boundary is somewhere driven by another factor. So just looking at the decision boundary, boundary could help you to understand uh, the answer of the system. Uh, could be some model parameter and layers. I will give an example just after. Also, okay, some point on the feature space and a lo lot of things. And there is some very, very interesting uh, part which uh, higher level information of features, because higher level information means information given by expert, expert of the area. Uh, uh, we will have some example in speech uh, after. And at the end, human-based explanation. There is one system quite nice. Uh, it's, there is a reference uh, at the end of my talk, where they try to learn uh, to tie uh, the, the training example of a neural network with human explanation of the training example. And after that, when we, 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 they, try, we, they apply the system uh, in, in terms of inference, the system in ans is answering a decision plus the human explanation uh, associated to, uh, to uh, the decision. It's quite easy for the training because you, you need a lot of examples. It was an image, which is a little bit simpler uh, than in, in, in other uh, area. But uh, the, the idea to, to join since the beginning of a system, human explanation plus uh, data uh, able to be uh, manipulated by the model is quite, uh, quite funny and quite interesting. So for interpretability, I have nothing to say uh, now because it's so dependent to the uh, application area Then you have to work by yourself in each of the areas. Where are I? J'ai combien de temps? Hein? Okay. 
good. Uh, some example, short example uh, and soft question about XI and speech processing. So until now, I, I was speaking about wishes. Now we come to <laughs> real world and what we could do. So what are the problems? First, when you are working on speech, you are working on time series. So speech is not like an image, just a fixed, uh, a fixed uh, size input. It's a variable size uh, input. Uh, you could have uh, one hour of speech or only half a second of speech. And this change in terms of dimension is very complex to uh, integrate in the system. Second, with se the, the sequence problem, the amount of features is very large. The features is a matrix between all the information you have at one time multiplied by the number of vectors you have in your uh, input. So it's a big matrix and it's difficult to, to, to work with, uh, with that. The second problem, I, 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 I talked uh, about it previously, is the fact that the human brain is not able to interpret audio and speech easily. Uh, when you are, uh, the, the human brain is trained to understand the linguistic behind the words, not the signal processing or the signal aspect. So when I'm speaking, you, you are not able to say that uh, uh, in the frequency band uh, 2,400 uh, uh, hertz, uh, I have a low or high energy. Maybe you could say that around 200 hertz I have quite a lot of energy, but, but not the, uh, the other one. So uh, if I show to you or if I give to you audio example, you are not able to make the difference. The second problem of interpretability is when you look at a, one image, your brain is able to memorize the image and to see it geographically immediately. So you, you could identify this part of the image, this part of the image, this part of the image. If I play to you uh, 10 minutes of your file, you will not be able at the end to understand that the mistake, the decoding mistake of the system, of the tra audio transcription system, is due to one word said uh, two minutes or three minutes before. Because you don't have a ge geographical, a physical memory, or a temporal memory of the speech. Uh, the brain is not built uh, to do that. So we have an interpretation problem in speech, uh, which is uh, make the problem more complex than in uh, uh, image processing, for example. So uh, we have also the variability problem. In all of computer science, data science, machine learning, we, we, we face this difficulty. But in speech, this difficulty is really large because uh, the the voice is not the same for people. Uh, the accent is not the same. My merveilleux English accent is certainly not uh, very, uh, a very standard one, and, and, and it makes a lot of difference in my speech, and a system will make uh, mistakes about that, and you have to take, account, take, in, take into account the accent in your explanation uh, system. You have the uh, audio, the, 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 the acoustic answer of a room, uh, the acoustic answer of my microphone. So uh, uh, a lot of things like that. Now, in addition to that, you have a, a set of problems we should be able to solve, which is usually the task definition is not well done. Sorry for the guy who are working on evaluation. Right. But, but uh, when... W uh, when we are, I, I, I was and I'm still working mainly in speaker identification. And when someone is happy because the system answer GF is speaking, when I input, uh, I, gi I, I gave in, uh, into, uh, in input to the system a very, very short audio file with only noise, uh, I think it's uh, um, a proof of a bad definition of the task. I want to see my system answering GF is speaking if there is uh, evidence of my voice into the audio file. If there is no evidence of the vo voice, I want to see that has a mistake uh, in the evaluation. It's, it's not the way we are evaluating the system now. If the label is GF, even if there is very few data, we are expecting a, a, a positive answer. So sometimes, our accuracy estimation of a system is uh, really higher than the truth. 
And the truth is the system is taking characteristic of a microphone, characteristic of uh, my accent, characteristic of a room to answer that I am speaking. Uh, is it what we want? Do you want to identify me or to identify my voice? If the, the, the job is to identify the voice, only the voice characteristic should be used to take the decision. So in explainability, we will fall into that, and usually you, you will observe a loss in performance, a loss in, a loss in accuracy, because you, you will try to concentrate your system, to say to your system to work only on uh, the, the true information you, you want to modelize. And uh, when you, you, you withdraw all the bias in the data, you try to do that, you lost in accuracy because uh, uh, for a discriminant system, it, it's easier to take an over characteristic in order to take the decision. So some, some uh, very short example I, I, I did with my students. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I, I asked them to work on a, a X vector uh, speaker verification system. So to explain it, it's a, a system which should say, with two examples of voice, if the two examples uh, were pronounced by the same speaker or not. Okay? The example of voice is represented by uh, this uh, embedding, uh, like uh, Hervé Bredin proposed, uh, presented to you uh, for the uh, diarization Jarvis system. So it's only a fixed, tie, a fixed <laughs> size vector, which represents the variable size uh, audio input uh, in this case. And I, uh, I asked them to work on the counterfactual uh, analysis in this, uh, in this space. So try to find the smallest modification you could do to the uh, uh, vector in order to inverse the decision and try to modelize the decision boundary uh, thanks to that. It, it was officially only six hours uh, practice. Uh, the answer I will give the students say, okay, I spent more than uh, 60 hours in your six hours uh, practice because it was not so simple. But the, the, the answer was quite nice. So I, I don't have time to say a lot of, of that. But for example, here, you could see uh, the, the true points. We, 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 uh, one, one color is one speaker. Okay? The true points are the uh, round one, the counterfactuals so of the boundaries, which uh, are exactly at the limit of the, the system, are the, the cross uh, ones. And uh, okay. It's nicer when you, you do it on the um, uh, notebook and, and you could move it and see uh, in 3D uh, where, where you are. It's only a 3D representation. But even if it's not perfect, for a lot of reasons, uh, it is working uh, quite well. Or why it's not perfect is uh, first because you could always inverse a positive decision. So if a vec two vectors are close enough one to the other, you could always find a way to increase the distance uh, until that the system is answering it's not the same class. In the opposite direction, it's not possible. If you have a vector somewhere and a vector somewhere, it's not always possible to mo in a high dimension uh, space, 500 uh, dimension space, it's not always possible to find a simple way to uh, move a vector uh, from uh, the original point uh, to the uh, target in order to have a positive uh, answer at the end. So the system is not, work, is not able to explain all the decision, uh, but there is some very interesting things. So you, you, you could see that when you look at the boundaries, you could uh, observe immediately that there is some mismatch between the speakers. When you look only at the original data, the, 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 the true data, the, the speaker representation seems very uh, separated one to the others. So it was the first trial, not bad, but a lot, a lot of work uh, for a few time. So, sorry, m may I have a question? Uh, can, can you please go back to the slide? So the, the, the dots, the rounded dots, were the original examples. Yeah. And uh, when you try to move them in some direction, you generate uh, and to some distance, you the first time you it changed the class. This is the boundary where yeah. is the cross. Right? Exactly. Okay, thanks. So, uh, 
they, uh, this student tried 100 algorithms to find uh, how to, uh, which dimension we have to modify in order to be as close as possible to the natural. Uh, uh, so he, he trained first a distribution uh, around that. And, okay. but, but in practice, it's exactly that, and it's uh, interesting. What could be very interesting is to do an inverse synthesis to a synthesis derrière, uh, after that, in order to hear if there is a modification in the voice or, or not, but yeah. we yeah. we didn't Can go I until that. Yeah. May I ask another question? Again, just to understand this plot. So it looks like if I took one of the round dots, I also need to know if it's a target trial, which other, let's say I take the one of the red round dots. I need to know which other red round dot it was paired with yeah. which you're going to move so that it moves far enough away that it says, no, it's not the same speaker. Or if I take a red and a, maybe a purple dot, how much do I have to move the red dot or maybe I just time the purple dot so that it says it's the same speaker? So right? here, so in so s yep. sorry, here it's only target trials. Oh, these uh, are only target yeah, trials. Yeah, because okay. as, I, as I said, uh, we, it was difficult to go to a wrong decision. It was uh, to um, a false acceptation. It was easier to go to a false reject got than it, to it, a okay. false acceptation. I see. So in some sense, what, uh, the way I should think of this plot is, uh, let's say again, I focus on the red ones. I mm. take many pairs of the red dots, and for each pair, I try to move one of them away until it says, no, it's not a red yeah. dot anymore. Exactly. And so in some sense, I'm putting a little envelope around the red dots yeah. and saying this is the... It's exactly that. If my memory is good, uh, we, we keep the uh, centroid, which is the, the, the red uh, dot w with the black uh, circle here. Oh, I see. Ha so has one of the examples. So in the Got pair, it. this one is not moving Got and it. we Got use it. the examples of the others. So each of the clouds has one anchor and yeah. then a bunch of on, target only, trials. Only one anchor and the other. And the target yeah. trials are pushed away until the boundary changes. Yeah. Okay. Right, so it will be fun, I don't know how hard it is, to plot this as a surface rather than just crosses, so that way we could see some funny shape around it. And oh, it, it, okay. Yeah, a, okay. a, a volume at, uh, at least, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because what I'm not able to see in this is how smooth or like, you know, wrinkled that surface is. Yeah, but uh, yeah. remember that it's only a, a 3D representation of a 500 dimensional That's space. That's also so true, you're right, you're right, okay. No, this is good. Thank you. I wanted to continue with this student, but he wanted a different domain. He, he, he didn't, didn't want to do speech. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> so um, I have no audio example, unfortunately, but this year I tried to do that in the audio domain using a data ablation approach. So you, you take your wave file and you try to find the smallest part of the file you have to withdraw in order to change the decision. Uh, when I brought the, um, <laughs> the, su the subject of a practical session, it was very easy to write it in five lines. When I had to answer to the student question, it was really <laughs> more hard because they asked me, okay, uh, are you speaking about the smallest continuous part of a signal we have to withdraw, like a word, or are you speaking about one frame, one, 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 so, some uh, piece of signal uh, separated one to the others, or uh, I don't know. And uh, practically, rapidly, it becomes very heavy uh, on the computer, on the cluster, uh, on the lab cluster to run uh, 10 different examples of that uh, at, at the same time, because it requests re really a lot of, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of example. I, it was interesting because sometimes we observe that uh, 90% of the file have to be redrawn in order to change the decision. So it's quite good, means uh, in your audio file, you use quite everything in order to take the decision. And sometimes you, on, on three second audio file, we had to redraw one frame, so uh, one cent of a second, uh, and it was enough. So something, I, it, it was so short that I, I can't try to hear it, I look at the signal, I didn't observe any difference in the signal, but you withdraw only that, and you change the decision of the system. So it was not explanation. I just saw the problem, but I don't solve the problem. And, but this approach of data ablation is interesting because at least it increases the confidence on your decision. 
if it's if on a 10 second file uh, withdrawing half a second is enough to change the decision it means that something is wrong <laughs> in your system at least uh, at least you know that and sometimes it's interesting because you you have to withdraw withdraw uh, half a second and you could hear a noise uh, in this half a second. It's not speech, it's uh, additive noise. So you understand that the system made a mistake because there is some noise in the uh, audio file. But it's only some examples and uh, we didn't find a way to have uh, uh, something running all the time uh, with that. It's also on, on my work table, but uh, not solved until uh, now. Okay, I will not talk about that and I will say some words about uh, a work I, I, I did with uh, Yannick Estev, Salima Mdafar, and uh, Natasha Tomashenko uh, published uh, last year. Uh, we published two papers, in fact. We try to analyze, uh, in the context of federated learning, uh, we try to analyze if a speech uh, uh, transcription model adapted to the voice of someone contains some information about the voice in uh, the weight. Normally, the speech uh, model parameters are dedicated to understand uh, the linguistic message and not the, the, the speaker. So we, we were, it's a very, very big model. Uh, it's a speech, uh, speech model, not very big, but uh, million of parameters and uh, not, did, not trained for speaker identification. So uh, the expectation w uh, was uh, in, in if you just transfer the, the network weights, you will have no information on the speaker. So we, we, we tried to, to see if it's true or not. We took our uh, network uh, adapted to the voice of uh, 500 different users as an input of a speaker identification system. And we look if, uh, if we work only with the first layer, the second layer, the third layer of, of, of uh, this big uh, input set, if uh, the uh, level of speaker identification is changing. So we try to understand if, uh, if the network embed gender information and speaker information uh, in the same time. And the result was uh, quite amazing. Uh, in terms of gender, uh, higher it is, better is the uh, gender recognition we show that the, the, the first layer, so the layer closest to the signal until uh, the, uh, the five layer uh, were very, very good to identify the gender. We, it was uh, quite expected because if you are close to the signal, you are, first, uh, you, you, you are low in terms of abstraction, so the system should take care about the difference in terms of voice between male and, and, and women. But what was more amazing is at the higher level, which is really the semantic level, uh, in fact, the system is still able to recognize uh, woman and male. Why? I don't know, but we could observe that. Uh, similarly, for the speaker, we observe that the, uh, at, at the lowest level, the, the system uh, analyzing the weight of, of, a, of a system uh, we observe that the, the uh, system is not uh, very good in terms of speaker identification, but it is in terms of error, sorry, of the second plot, the right plot. But after, so at the, uh, at the lowest level, uh, there is few information about the speaker, but a little bit after, there is very, uh, at the middle level, a very good level of information on the speaker. And when we are moving to the, this time to the um, semantic information, the level of information about the speaker is decreasing, which was uh, quite um, expected. So one interpretation, human and not automatic at all, tu peux prendre après le micro. One interpretation of that is here it's like an image, the signal processing level. So it's just extracting the features here. Here, the system uh, uh, work with gender and speaker trying to uniformize, normalize the differences. And here, the system is working on uh, the semantic uh, part. I have a uh, question. Uh, what happened in the layer six? Uh, do you have any idea why uh, there is a drop? No. 
So it was a complex experiment because you need to. It, 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 it's done on the Tedlum uh, uh, database and protocol. We have few speakers. Uh, we have only 500, so we train on uh, on the first set and apply on the second set. And the, the interesting technical stuff was uh, we built an uh, uh, embedded extractor train for speaker on this very strange uh, feature set. So. Uh, According to me, at what time the, the embedding system was not able to uh, to train and to go to a good uh, optimization point. So I, I don't think it's an important uh, result, it is, but, but it's only my feeling now. Also. Okay. Just if I understood correctly, so uh, the neural network was the ASR system, yeah. and then you uh, switched the classifi classification header uh, head, sorry, and for gender and speaker task, or uh, no, what was no, the exact set? Not exactly. We took the weight of the uh, speaker adapted ASR uh, ASR system mm -hmm. as input for a speaker identification system. So we built a new system, and this uh, for gender, we just look at the clustering of the vectors. It was uh, two class, two classes so simple. For the speaker, uh, we train an embedding uh, like we are training it uh, in a, with a classification head, classically in speaker identification. And after that, we obtained two vectors, and we did a cosine uh, distance between the two vectors. You are extracting embeddings after first, second, third, etc. layers. Yeah. So you, you, we, we, we are taking as input the weight of the first layer, or the weight of the second layer, or the weight of the third layer. Okay. Okay. Yes. And uh, the second paper is quite the same, but we took in this in, in the second paper we t we took the activation and not the weight, so giving that data uh, inside, and the results are really better. But it, but it's interesting speaker identification, not in uh, interpretability. So, uh, just two, two slides to say, uh, uh, is it so new, uh, the, the fact to do uh, explainability, in the, there is a mistake, explainability in speech? Uh, I don't think so. I'm trying to work on that since 20 years. So, I don't, I don't think it's so difficult and it's so, uh, at least to understand what your, our system are doing. Uh, a, a brief example uh, here, I will go directly to this, to this plot. So, in, in this work done uh, with my former student, Moez Agili, uh, we try to understand in speaker verification the relation between the phonemic content of the messages and the decision. And to do that, we, we, we use an ablation uh, approach. So, you, 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 you build your, your, your trial test. Now, you, we, you decide to suppress one phoneme in all the files. So when I have my, my pairs, it's compar speaker comparison, I have my two files, I suppress all the A in my two files, and I look if the performance is decreasing. If the performance is decreasing when I'm suppressing the uh, one class of phoneme, it was class and not phoneme here, it means that this class of phoneme uh, is important for the decision, is driving the decision, it's one of my drivers. So it seems very simple like that, very straightforward, it's a no, 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 uh, knockout strategy. To apply it in practice is very complex because when you have two files, you don't have the same number of, uh, uh, number, no, same number of examples of A in the two files. So in practice, we compare all the time the file where we withdraw a certain amount of data linked to the uh, information we want to try to 20 random example where, 20 example where we randomly withdraw the same amount of data. And it's the difference in terms of performance of a random destruction, random ablation of data compared to uh, uh, in interest specific information ablation of data which allow us to, co to, to compute the influence of each uh, phoneme uh, class in the decision. And the influence is, so is, is shown here. So, for example, the blue dark is the oral vo uh, voyal, which appears to, to be the most important one. 
uh, it's for f 30 different speakers and the in average uh, in the right. If uh, you are going down, it, it means that uh, you lost in performance when you withdraw the oral voyal, which means that the oral voyal are driving, are important for speaker identification. So it's a quite, it's a, a very easy protocol to implement. Technically, yeah, there is nothing difficult in terms of uh, how to apply it. Uh, you have to be very careful because uh, there is a lot of uh, bias potential, uh, potential bias in terms of st uh, statistics when you withdraw some frame and some others. But it's giving a lot of information. For example, here, when you look at the speakers, the speakers are uh, uh, in the uh, a specific order from V1 with quite zero error here and V1 with a lot of here, uh, errors here. And we could observe that the influence of a, vo of a phoneme are not the same in this class of speakers for which the system is working very well and this class of, of speakers which uh, brings maybe 90% of the mistakes. So it's not explanation, it's not interpretation, but it's a, a, a big step in direction of uh, explanation and interpretation. From that, we could understand uh, uh, really in what case, which, how the linguistic content drive uh, the uh, decision also in speaker identification. So it's so just a way to say that using your normal system and using your normal knowledge, what you know, do, you, you, you know in computer science, you could do explanation quite easily. You just have to work on it. So in terms of conclusion, uh, for the future of AI, uh, there is no choice. Uh, it's explanation is mandatory because there is a lot of needs. I say that at the introduction and really, uh, when I, when I said exactly that two years ago uh, in the uh, Esperanto uh, seminar on explainability, it was not so straightforward. Uh, but after two years, when you look at the uh, regulation uh, evolution and on the media, it's very clear that in, in five years, uh, our students will begin by learning explainability before to learn speech processing or, or NLP. So I'm quite sure we will completely inverse the, uh, the curses. So uh, try to use directly the very nice uh, piece of work I presented to you do done by, by the other people in image, uh, like uh, Shep, uh, Toolkit, and the others. Uh, seems very interesting, but is intractable in speech uh, due to the number of features, uh, the size of our inputs due to the uh, fact that we are not able to interpret it, due to the high number of variety factor, uh, but also because we still have to define correctly the task. Uh, we have to work on the speech science, the phenomena, physical phenomena uh, we are working with. It's not mathematical vectors, it's speech, and speech is coming from the brain and the body. So if you want to do interpretability in speech processing, you have to come back to a uh, human, to the body, to uh, why you are communicating, uh, what is the context and what is the, uh, uh, the objective uh, of that. So please keep in mind uh, the fact that the little bit the explanation and a lot the interpretability is always depending on the receiver of explanation of, uh, of uh, the interpretation. So, when you start to work on that, think about who will read and who will have to ta take decision based on your explanation. If it's only for you, you don't have to do explanation. You know the things. Uh, if you are doing that, it's just to explain that to a lawyer, to a customer, to someone else, to a doctor, uh, in the case of Sundes. And this case, uh, in this case, you have to take care about them. Okay, uh, well, this is my conclusion, I will rest. Uh, we have to, of course, to, in speech processing, to split the features because uh, we are not able to interpret how uh, capstral coefficient one by one. So we need to group the features. 
And we will have uh, in the next part two examples on how to do that with two different strategies. Uh, Imen will show a strategy where the, syst the explanation system itself is grouping the uh, information by attribute. And now the explanation problem is, uh, the XAI problem is how to interpret one attribute, get red bottom up. And uh, Sundes will uh, uh, show how we could start with human expert, with the need of doctors, uh, pathological expert in this case, in order to constrain this speech explanation. And thank you for your attention. If you still have some questions, I'm uh, uh, open to you, and we, we will have a lot of questions also with uh, Iman and Sundes. And sorry, Anthony, you see, uh, I was able to speak exactly the good time. You're, you're amazed about that. Huh? <laughs> well, I, if you want more, I still have a lot of material, but uh, I think it's enough for you. Do you have some more questions? Do you want to do go to... Yeah. Uh, yes, I have a question about uh, the trade-off uh, in performance and interpretability you talk uh, about. I was wondering, do this trade-off really exist or not? Because actually in the literature, yes, it exists. When we add interpretability to a system, we lose some performances. But I was thinking, do we just have maybe just um, some, are we just late comparing to the non-interpretable system? In the, in the past, those systems were not as performant uh, as now, so maybe we just are late in the interpretability part for the performance. Do you agree or not? Do you respond? <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm speaking with Imen and Killing because we, we had some um, review from our last paper in Interspeech exactly on that. We were quite happy because we lost only 2% of performance when adding interpretability. And we said that we are at the beginning of our system, so we will reduce this gap uh, in the future, and we are reducing it uh, now. Uh, but for the reviewer, if you are not at the state of the art, if you are not the, the, uh, don't have the best equilibrium rate, uh, your paper is bullshit, it's not interesting. So uh, my answer is in two parts. First, I agree with you, when you, we start a new technology, uh, you need time to improve it, and uh, in 10 years, uh, the gap will be uh, smaller. Now the second part of uh, the answer is, if you do interpretability only, means you withdraw some uh, bias used by the, system, the discrimination system, how cl classification hid when we, we train the system, and it's quite mandatory, uh, you will lose in terms of accuracy. Now the good question is, accuracy, is it the good uh, criterion for performance? Uh, according to me, since during the 20 last year uh, of my work, I always say no. Uh, accuracy is a, a bad god, it's not the god uh, and the, 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 the good driver uh, for us. So in terms of accuracy, I'm sure we will always lose with a system which, uh, uh, where you limit uh, the view of the data and say, okay, this one, I don't want to see it, I don't want to use it. Of course, you will lose in terms of performance. If we define more correctly the evaluation criterion, uh, where is Craig? <laughs> <laughs> it's your work. Uh, after that, we uh, we will not see this loss. Uh, so maybe in 20 years, we will not see this loss. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for this interesting presentation. Uh, about the uh, last uh, slide, last experiment that you showed, uh, I think a slide uh, 14.8, when you do a removal of the some class of phoneme to see the, the impact, I just crossed to my mind that when we are removing a phoneme in terms of the duration, the duration can be different. Yeah. So have you calculated the correlation between the uh, the class and the duration of each class 
to see that, uh, I mean, I, my point is uh, uh, when we want to interpret or explain the decision, sometimes there is a dangerous of the, uh, the risk of misinterpretation or misexplanation. So it, it would be a one case, uh, but it could be not true. Uh, uh, but the point is, if we remove the half of the sentence, which contain a, a, a one a vowel, so we lose half of the information. Yeah, it's why in the protocol we don't compare the uh, original file with the file without the uh, in, in interest phoneme. We compare the file where we withdraw 50% of frame linked to A, for example, okay. and 50% of frame uh, taken randomly, including A and the other frames. And we repeat this random stuff 20 times to take the average. So to give an example, in our protocol, we have two, two million of tests. So for each phoneme uh, and each test, we, we did uh, uh, f 20 million uh, each time of, of trial. In terms of compu computation, and, uh, it was, it's crazy, but just in order to, uh, to take uh, into account of your point. So, so in terms of results, we have no problem because uh, we do that. In terms of eta interpretability of a local decision, in one case, it's not possible, it will not work. It, 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 it's a view of a system, uh, a general... Uh, in explanation, we uh, make a difference between global explanation on the system and local explanation of a decision. Uh, this approach is dedicated to global explanation of a system. In average, uh, oral voyel are important and we, you need uh, this amount of oral voyels. Uh, but this approach is not able to deal with uh, a specific case. Not yet. <laughs> Thank mm. you. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, the presentation. I want just to ask a question if we go back to the example from image processing when you have a guitar and a cat and it was, uh, I mean, uh, confused. <laughs> the system was confused. Can we think about adversarial, uh, I mean, examples when we know that we should predict a cat but uh, we predict uh, a guitar by adding a lot of examples with cat and guitar and tell the system how to learn to differentiate between both of them. It could be maybe uh, a way to explain, I mean, or to help the system to, uh, to be more, um, I mean, to, to do better decisions. And I don't know if we can apply this for speech, for example, by adding mispronunciation or, I mean, um, to, to, to really uh, introduce this kind of noise and make the system more uh, robust uh, against this. So how to use uh, data generation, uh, somewhere adversarial or not, but data generation, uh, for the to, to, to uh, have a more robust system, yes, of course. For uh, to better on explanation, uh, so uh, I just write a, a project proposal on that uh, where we, we, we are promising, we, we could uh, cut the microphone for the... For no, no, I'm, I, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, to, to, to do that, where uh, we are promising to uh, fill completely the uh, data space. So how to do generate from this point to this point very regularly modification between male voice and female voice, for example. I hope we will have the money uh, to do the research. To be honest, it's absolutely impossible uh, because we don't know the... <laughs> for two reasons. First, uh, we don't have a, a, a no enough knowledge on speech to define the, the, the good direction to do that. And second one, um, when we are trying to generate, we are generate, generating, uh, uh, in English, les chimères, chimères or chimère, chimère, something, a mix between two animals. Uh, which is not existing in nature. So the main problem when you are generating, even with uh, adversarial uh, approaches, is the fact that your, your example are, are not natu natural. So uh, not like an image, maybe is uh, hard for speech yeah. compared to image. Uh, in, in image, it's easier. Uh, uh, 
okay, I'm not an image processing guy, but maybe there is image processing people here. Uh, but uh, in image, it seems to me that the variability is really lower than what we have in speech. We could define the variability. We could work with uh, uh, 10 types of cats, uh, for example. In speech, it's, not pos it's very difficult to, to make some uh, limits like that. Yeah, maybe I was thinking about uh, tweaking the same signal, not really generating a new in synthesis, but like in the example of voils, take the uh, signal and try to uh, see where there is voice, uh, voils and remove that frames and get a new, I mean, input. <laughs> yeah. So it's a nice new project for us. <laughs> kind of a naive question. Uh, like at the top row, you have uh, the examples which are misclassified. Uh, are you able to detect them automatically? Uh, oh, it's not my work. Eh? It's, it, it's uh, a paper. No, no, they, they, they detect it uh, manually and try and they try to explain the mistakes. So uh, it's, they took the misclassified images in their protocol. It's a very classical one uh, protocol, and then uh, try to explain by training examples, uh, inferential instances, uh, the different. Um, the, the which, which training images may makes the fa drive the mistakes. So there is no automatic detection of mistakes. <laughs> okay, just I, I, I'm taking the advantage of your question to say that I didn't spoke about prototype and criticism, which is a, a quite nice approach to structure your training data, where you 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 try to find the most influential example, uh, the most classical example in your training set, which is uh, this one, and the criticism. The idea is you do clustering like k-means, it's your prototypes, but uh, we know in, that in real life that we have some very strange example in the classes, so you also keep in memory the criticism, which is uh, the example of one class uh, uh, the farthest to the uh, prototype, uh, with the largest distance to the prototype. So you, you, keep, you keep in memory the po for, for cats, you, or guitars, you keep in memory the uh, uh, prototypes of guitars, but also the strange images like this one for guitars. So when we have to retrain the system or to look at the system in some uh, cases, we could just go to the prototype and criticism, which is an abstract view of our very large data set. So it's a, I, I work with one of my students on that. It's in speech, this is very interesting because you, you could do that at different level. You could start with prototype and, uh, and criticism uh, by subset of data and then redo it in, in uh, try to reclassify your prototype uh, after. Actually, uh, when I'm going to ask about data cleaning, so uh, it's basically like lead, how do you decide yeah. the boundary? What's actually the the prototype and criticism. Yeah, yeah it, it's a uh, MMD, uh, a very simple algorithm uh, they, they use. We try to, uh, at the same time, uh, minimize the classification uh, errors. Uh, so you try to find the k-means with the minimum uh, errors and uh, in the same time, the minimum of uh, criticism. So each time you, you, you uh, I would say it's MMD. It's very simple. The, the big problem is on N3. <laughs> so if you have one million of data, it's quite <laughs> expensive to compute. But it's very easy to implement. Just there is a mistake uh, in, in the article in one formula. But, uh, okay. It's very straightforward. You, you will uh, understand it in two minutes if you read the paper. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have another question uh, about the, the future of uh, XAI. <laughs> uh, you talk about the three types of uh, explainability, interpretability method, uh, the pre-hoc, the post-hoc, and the by design. Mm. I was wondering what will happen to the post-hoc uh, method, because I think uh, that there are maybe not really 
good for the future of XAI because they will favorize the, um, the creation of uh, still non-interpretable uh, model because big company can say uh, we can create non-interpretable model because maybe other people will do post hoc methods that will uh, make uh, them interpretable. So it is really a good thing. Uh. Okay. Uh, of course, in the best world, uh, the future is uh, interpretable by natural methods. Uh, that, that's uh, quite clear. There is one very interesting paper which said if we want that, we need standardization of methods, which is quite interesting also. So as long as we are trying to change the structure of the models in order to win open 0.0001% of accuracy, uh, we will not have uh, explainability because adding explainability will be too expensive uh, each time. So uh, maybe if by law for some application you are allowed to use only one set of methods, uh, we will stay on that and do uh, nothing else. Now, uh, post hoc uh, explainability. If you look at the very recent uh, uh, emergence of uh, ChatGPT and this kind of model uh, with uh, 1,000 billion of parameters, is mandatory. Uh, we, we will never, ha according to me, it's a prediction, maybe uh, I will be very wrong, uh, uh, but I, I don't see how uh, uh, one uh, thousand billion parameters model could be explainable by nature. So, uh, but I see in some application how we could do post hoc mo uh, explanation, even using a very large uh, foundation model like that, uh, in, in specific cases. So, you, you could do post hoc modeling, post hoc explainability for uh, medical image processing using a very large model without problem. According to me, the, the free will continue to, uh, to exist and will be interesting at least for the 20 uh, next years. I, uh, after that, I could do all the prediction you want. It's not, my <laughs> it's not longer my problem. So, thank you.